Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Why am I sitting on the floor on a blue drop sheet in my bare feet? Well, we're gonna get a bit messy today, maybe. Um, this one will be a bit different. Usually we open uh, products to see how they work inside, how they're designed or uh, manufactured, all that sort of stuff. But I thought, well, I just take some uh, dumpster diving uh, office stuff I've uh, got from the junk room and uh, take them apart and see if there's any useful stuff in them. So I've had these sitting around for some time. They're just taking up room here in the lab, getting really annoying. So I thought we'd take them apart, salvage all the uh, useful uh, stuff out of them, or stuff that'll sit in the uh, uh, junk uh, box for, you know, 20 years until I toss it out then, or Sagan tosses out. Ah, uh, who knows, I've still got stuff in my junk bin from 30 years ago. Jeez, let's not go there. Anyway, see what useful stuff is inside these things just basic um, office equipment we've got these uh, multi-function uh, printer fax uh, scanner uh, type things we've got uh, laser printers and a uh, fax machine so just your general office stuff that you might think ah heap of garbage is there anything good in them usable well let's find out so you know what we say here on the EV blog don't turn it on take it apart First cab off the rank, this uh, Samsung fax machine. Very basic thing, it's an SF341P inkjet, all in one. So no, it's not as good as say a uh, laser based one. Laser is gonna have a bit more uh, goodness in them. But um, anyway, um, we'll see if there's anything useful inside a basic fax machine like this. Looks like we're getting down in some useful parts already. Of course, there's nothing on uh, these type of uh, front panel PCBs. There's an LCD, but it's you know it's going to be a, uh, a custom type. Really, no point uh, scrounging that. Of course, what do you do with uh, membranes like that? Another uh, front panel jazz. Not really much, but you know you start getting into uh, some of the boards in here, which we're getting into. There's a couple of motors down in here. There's some uh, gears if you're into uh, cogs and uh, stuff if you're into uh, that sort of thing and uh, another motor over there so we're getting there there's some ferrites down in there we've got a couple of uh, ferrites over here on uh, this stuff really good they're worth uh, salvaging we've got a power supply mains power supply board down the bottom there of course that would uh, still be usable so yeah not too bad i mean of course you know main logic uh, control cards like this they're good for um things like you know uh, surface mount uh, soldering or desoldering or rework uh, uh you know uh, training and practice and stuff like that but apart from that um you know uh, you might be able to find the odd useful part there's some nice looking uh, inductors there of course you're not going to bother salvaging the uh, caps out of them really and all the you know what are you going to do with like a big arm shark processor or something over here i don't know not much but yeah it's looking worthwhile now, of course, this uh, inkjet mechanism here, the inkjet uh, cartridge just sat in here. That's no good, uh, of course. But as a whole assembly, it might be useful uh, for some people. Motor uh, driven here, of course, and that can just move this sucker back and forth like that. So if you've got an application um, for, you know, something that, you know, you could attach an arm onto here or something and have that go across like that, then you would uh, keep that in one piece. I really wouldn't uh, bother Personally, I'd rather sort of, you know, get the motors, cogs, there's some uh, springs on the back here, of course. You'd add those to your little uh, spring drawer of, uh, you know, random springs and stuff like that. You know, not much you can do with the rollers. I don't know, some people might have a uh, application for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, personally, I wouldn't keep that as a complete mechanism myself unless I had something in mind. But, uh, yeah, you certainly scrap the motor, the springs, all the flat flex cables, of course, pretty uh, useless unless you you know it's worth keeping a couple of flat flex cables for something perhaps but you know what do you do with the belt in there for example a couple of cogs I don't know so here's our swag of uh, I think useful stuff out of this we've got ourselves a speaker got ourselves a flat flex we might uh, keep that in the parts drawer we've got uh, three uh, ferrites in there we can uh, unwrap though oh, yep there they are that's the only useful thing on that board three ferrites we've got ourselves uh, three uh, motors there's one basic uh, DC motor over there which I haven't uh, taken out of the whole rig there you could keep that and we've got a reduction uh, mechanism there 
there we go got some reduction gears there maybe you'd keep that or just uh, scrap the motor out they look like are they two identical motors are they let's have a look sp 42 rd yes they look uh oh, not quite almost identical there you go anyway uh they're useful we've got ourselves a uh, line interface board here not too much on here but we have ourselves a um uh, one of these uh, photo interrupter um, things where you uh, put something in there and it interrupts the uh, there's a lead in one side and a photo diode in the other and it interrupts they're very useful worth getting those out a couple of little uh, line isolation uh, transformers in there got ourselves a relay have we yeah got ourselves a relay you'd nick that out of there a couple of opto couplers and uh, well that's about it out of that not terribly exciting you wouldn't write home about that it, uh, we've got ourselves a power supply and it's got uh, it's got the AC uh, input directly on it it looks you know it probably does the job there but uh, yeah you might keep that as a whole uh, item we've got ourselves uh, 24 volts and 5 volts not you might use that as an entire uh, power supply module in its own right and then we've got our main board up here uh, once again you can nick those inductors down there looks like we've got a motor driver down here you could possibly like you know hack some of that board off you could even like a saw right through it or something and maybe uh, use the motor driver uh, chip out of that if you are really uh, desperate perhaps but yeah not a huge amount of useful stuff on uh, logic boards like this you know what are you gonna do suck off the Samsung arm processor I don't think so not really gonna happen but uh, yeah you would at least keep it once as i said you know solar in uh, practice or uh, something like that perhaps but there you go that's a reasonably uh, useful uh, swag we've got ourselves a uh, ferrite here for a, a flat flex cable they're really useful there's something uh, you don't often get so you'll definitely uh, keep that but yeah that's not a bad little sw oh 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 hang on i forgot i forgot yes you're thinking where's the um where's the line scanner there it is there's the line scanner came out of a uh, fax machine obviously um, scans an entire uh, line at a time not sure if you could uh, Dyna Image Co never heard of them DL100 I don't know you'd have to Google that see if you can get the data on it but uh, pretty simplistic uh, interface and you might be able to use that um, uh, scanner for something I don't know the resolution of this didn't look like a you know top of the line fax machine so the resolution wouldn't be that, that great but there you go certainly worth um scrapping one of these uh low-end fax machines i think actually i stand corrected on the lcd module from this thing um it looks like it's a standard hitachi interface one vhx uh 1610 looks like the uh, standard interface at least so uh yeah you could definitely use that i mean that's a nice little sort of you know uh, uh plastic protective uh case you could certainly um add something like that as an lcd to a product and you know it's fully protected very nice that's useful i'll scrounge that one too thank you very much uh, and i miss those even on this uh, front panel board a couple of little photos interrupter sensors there ah oh, worth desoldering and next up here we've got ourselves a hp uh photo smart c42 83 once again one of these uh, combined uh, office uh, scanner inkjet uh, printer things no it's not laser it's um, uses Viera HP inks uh, whatever um, this one does have like a little uh, color uh, display on it something like that so you'll definitely whip uh, that module out of there but let's crack this one open see what it has to offer Once again, it didn't take us uh, long to uncover some goodness here. Here's the uh, scanner mechanism with the uh, uh, CCFL uh, cold cathode uh, tube in there, which uh, light, I believe it is anyway, which uh, lights this thing up. And uh, it looks like that uh, dries itself. So we've got ourselves a motor on the back of there. There we go. Does that have a little driver on there? No, it's just like a little interrupter wheel. Probably, yeah, very, you just see it in there little photo interrupter wheel in there and uh, that's how they that's how they get uh, the positional 
uh, count on this thing, of course. Got ourselves a ton of flat flex. You know, you'd probably keep them. You wouldn't uh, get too many of those. Um, generally, and you've got, you know, very long ones here. You might be able to uh, custom use those for a, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, weird-ass product or something like that. We've got ourselves a USB interface board over here. Not much on that. We've just got ourselves some uh, ferrites and things like that. Big, big-ass inductor on there. We can salvage, but, uh, yeah, we've got more stuff happening down here. There's another motor down in there. So, we're getting there. Uh, not too bad at all so far. And on the bottom of the top platform, of course, we knew we'd get a uh, nice piece of uh, glass out of this. So, yeah, definitely well worth uh, keeping. It looks like we can just uh, unclip uh, that from there. Board over here where our LCD is, well... Um, we, you know, we can get the LCD module out of the back of that. We've just got ourselves some uh, a flat flex in there. But apart from that, there's another uh, photo sensor there. But, you know, it's just got chip on board there. That's no good. So that board's not worth salvaging apart from the LCD under there. And once again, if you had a use for uh, a mechanism like this for the uh, printhead, uh, you would certainly keep it. There's the uh, uh, just a basic uh, DC motor on the bottom. And you can see... How they get the feedback on that thing. I'd need to get the macro lens out for that one to give you a uh, close-up look of that. There you go. You'll probably have to watch this in HD to get that. But you can see that's how they get the feedback in there. You can see that they've got a tiny little stripe pattern in there of a known distance. You'd have to know what the uh, distance is, of course. But even if you didn't know, you could actually uh, calibrate the thing. Based on that number of counts, it'd be a uh, photo sensor in the uh, head down in here that that uh, tape runs through that you can get a uh, pulse count out of no doubt so you know that could be very very useful and there you go there's a close-up of that looks like it's got some gunk on there but uh, could certainly use that I mean it's absolute position relative to the you know the relative to the mechanical uh, frame over here isn't going to be uh, very good of course, but you could certainly uh, use it as a relative uh, position. So I'm not sure what the uh, distance is in there, but uh, it's you know it's pretty fine. It's probably as uh, fine as you would want for a uh, positional feedback. And there's our photo sensor down in there for that. There it is. Just popped it out. So that one's uh, probably you know um, it's probably got a you know a tiny little slit in it. It's, uh, capable of very good resolution but yeah i'm not sure if you could reuse that board you know who knows i don't know there's an st part How, i'm not going to google it uh now but you know presumably um you would have to assume that that uh would be a bit of a lost cause uh trying to get uh, data out of this thing you'd take it uh, directly from the photo sensor there if you really wanted to i mean the chip on there is you know maybe not even uh got much if anything to do with uh, the positional sensing at all it may just feed it back I mean that's obviously in there for the uh, print heads there they all are you can see the individual wires there going down to the uh, the print head mechanism down oh this is a dual one looks like it has a uh, black and uh, color or uh, something like that and uh, yeah I don't know probably can't reuse that board I just get the sensor and then turf it and this drive mechanism down in here that one has also got a nice little uh, photo interrupter wheel down in there going down to a photo. Probably can't see it, but there's a photo sensor board down in there. So whether or not you actually kept, you know, this whole, uh, you know, this whole mechanism right across here for uh, something, I don't know, I doubt it. Usually you just, uh, unless you had a very specific uh, application in mind, you would generally just uh, salvage the motor out of that. But yeah, like, you know, it's just a shame to sort of, you know, toss out a very nice high-resolution photo interrupter wheel like that. And there it is, you can see it. I mean, I'd need the macro lens again to get a look at the uh, resolution on that wheel there, but that is, you know, that is going to be quite remarkable. And uh, I don't know, anyone got any good ideas what you would do with an intact mechanism like that there you go between nine and ten there anyone want to count those so there's our little uh, swag out of that not very big but uh, useful nonetheless first of all we've got this uh, uh, lovely bit of glass out of the front so that's pretty darn useful 
you definitely uh, keep that for something. We've got a couple of motors. We've got a uh, card reader here. Look look at this. It's, you know, it's one of those all-in, you know, five-in-one uh, card reader things. I don't know. I'd have to look up the um, SMSC uh, number on that. But basically, that's, you know, all uh, self-contained. It looks like it's just, uh, you know, serial data out of that. Maybe you could use that as a complete module. Apply power and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, you could hook that up to your Arduino or something, perhaps. No idea, but I've uh, got a couple of motors. There's that uh, photo sensor complete on a board with its own little uh, flat flex. We've got ourselves another little flat flex uh, ferrite there. Once again, you would uh, keep those. They're quite useful. And there's our um, sensor board with, uh, well, there's a uh, third motor in there, of course. And that's got a pretty uh, simplistic uh, interface there if you wanted to have a play around with that. But that's probably got a, uh, a cold cathode uh, lamp in that plus uh, sensor. Not entirely... Uh, sure, I haven't taken that apart any further. Anyway, um, but that's useful. We've got ourselves. Here's our module. Here we go. There is our lovely, I believe it's a, uh, from, I did actually power this thing up um, a couple of months back when I actually got it. And uh, and I believe that was a little colour um, LCD module. So well worth uh, scrapping that. And of course you could probably uh, cut the board off or, you know, cut it across there or something if you wanted to actually get access to the connector because you know often there's no point getting these little modules if you don't get the flat flex connector to go with it so you'd uh, uh, salvage that no doubt another photo sensor there chip on board the rest of it's um uh, well the LCD I can't remember what the LCD gave out but uh, very uh, simple interface you could possibly reuse that so there you go the rest of it uh, you wouldn't would you bother getting the tactile buttons oh, I doubt it but Anyway, nice little LCD module score. I like it. Uh, once again, the main uh, processor board here, not of a huge amount of use. Like, you know, surface mount uh, regulator there, low dropout reg, but there's a nice big inductor. You'd, that's worth uh, desoldering for sure. But apart from that, you know, they, like you generally don't uh, salvage caps for these things unless you're pretty uh, desperate. But uh, yeah, that's not of much use, but not bad, worth taking apart. Next up, the humble laser printer. This is a HP LaserJet 1010. I've got a uh, fair few of these as well, and uh, no doubt, of course, uh, you know it's a laser printer, so there's obviously going to be a laser in there if you want to uh, play around with some uh, laser stuff. And of course, there'll be a whole bunch of motors and uh, rollers and sensors and all sorts of stuff, very similar to the uh, photocopy uh, teardown. If you haven't seen that, by the way, it'll be linked in uh, down below here. You can see me. Uh, taking apart a uh, massive uh, photocopier which was uh, quite an epic. Anyway, let's see what's useful inside this one. And we're into the guts of this thing, of course, you know, the uh, middle in there is uh, practically empty, of course, so uh, a lot of your uh, stuff is all going to be uh, on the outside here's a here's a, well, a control board which was on this side here nothing really interesting on there at all i'm afraid that's not worthwhile look what i found on the side of the case though right this thing here that's not a micro switch look what's on the back of this there's a diode in there and there's a resistor what on earth are they doing with that i have no idea that's just that's just crazy um anyone um it's almost as if like it's an afterthought or some sort of oh yeah this is a, some sort of protection resistor and protection diode that are designed to burn out and if they burn out it's going to burn out in its own little thing there i i don't know beats the hell out of me it's not like it's a contact thing i mean they're just using this as a contact it looks very convoluted to design all that i mean it's not like some sort of switch mechanism and it come and makes contact or something like that and we certainly have ourselves a big nice power supply board here there it is primary secondary all over here this would be uh driving the heater of course this is i think that's probably one of the main wires going over there for the fuser uh who knows i'm not going to uh, sort out the architectural details of this thing useful micro switch up there i don't mind it you could uh, rip the transformers out of there. Probably as it stands, not 
may be a hugely uh, useful power supply, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I don't know, you would just uh, keep the entire board. And there's our fuser roller mechanism, I mean, you know, you wouldn't even bother uh, keeping that at all, really, there's nothing uh, of huge value in there, unless you wanted the uh, heater element uh, out of that thing, but anyway, here's the main uh, board that came out of that, not bad, uh, 200 volt uh, secondary on that, so I don't know if you want to uh, muck around with high voltage stuff like that. I mean, it, you know, once again, it's all integral. You know, you've got your IEC input there and your switch, and it's all, you know, it's all raring to go. So, well worth salvaging that. And there's not much else uh, left in there. Here's our laser module, of course. That'll come out as a complete module, and that's what uh, scans the laser across the uh, drum there. We've got one big ass motor. There's a fair bit of mechanical goodness in there but once again unless you had a very specific need to hook that up or you wanted to get uh, innovative then you'd uh, I don't know all we're after is the uh, motor pretty much and the laser mechanism of course is the uh, the bit laser module in there is the big score in this thing um, I have opened these uh, laser modules before I may do it oh look at that beautiful and there it is pops up there's the uh, there's the output lens of course, because uh, this thing has to uh, scan across the entire page like that, and it's got to do it in a linear uh, fashion, of course. It has to be uh, absolutely spot on. So we've, uh, we've done a uh, teardown of one, of one of these from a uh, photocopier before, and uh, some very nice precision uh, laser optics in there. This is the, uh, uh, well, this is a driver board for the uh, motor. It went off to the stepper motor, which we scored, by the way. Excellent. Um, not a problem. Let's have a look at that. That's a uh, Mitsumi. There we go. 7.5 degrees per step stepper motor. Very useful indeed. And uh, But this sucker looks like we might be able to just uh, pop the lid off that and have a squeeze inside. And ta-da! There it is. Look at that. Beautiful. I mean, the uh, laser module bounces off the uh, rotating... Um, drum here that's where that's basically the principle and then it scans and then the drum based on the timing of course goes through this complicated uh, two-step lens here and that scans across the page like that and as I said it can do it completely uh, linearly and it looks like it has the uh, driver on there of course so uh, you know should be able to uh, uh, hack and drive this thing fairly easily I mean here's the uh, laser module over here so we've got ourselves looks like the laser module uh, driver this isn't going to be a complete teardown but uh, you know looks like pretty uh, simplistic interface and then that's our laser module so if you just wanted the uh, you know just want the laser diode out of this thing you could just rip that out and have the driver board uh, on its own but anyway it's designed to go down through that lens in there and then bounce off the uh, I shouldn't uh, turn it my hands are all grubby and uh, and crap here but around there and uh, that bounces off that of course and then just scans out there so the laser comes through here like this yeah I'm not sure why that one's on an angle like that I mean it's coming out lasers coming out like that then it sort of needs to then that lens is on an angle anyway I'm not sure of the exact optics of what's going on here but it bounces off there and then that just scans around like that and can do the entire page brilliant but that looks very usable and of course if you did want to uh, more easily uh, reverse engineer this thing then you'd keep all the electronics or you'd uh, just open it up and probe it while the thing's actually uh, working and actually uh, probe the interface here and uh, see what we get but it looks like that's basically just uh, motor drive uh, down in there for that uh, bottom board that we looked at and uh, this is the laser interface over here so we'd have you know the high speed uh, data coming in here to uh, drive the laser and um, but you know pretty darn simple by the looks of it and I'm guessing there that this uh, safety shutter is uh, just as the name would uh, suggest when you um, like if you open the uh, cover on this and the you know to take out the uh, toner while it's actually uh, working it would just bam shut that down so the laser doesn't come out so from all that junk over there, from this uh, laser 
printer, then uh, this is our hall down here. And, uh, you know, it's uh, surprisingly little. But, of course, the jewel in the crown is the uh, laser module. These things are just pornographic. They really are. They're definitely worth um, saving. And, uh, yeah, we have, a, like, a motor driver board. whoop de doo We have a useless digital board. whoop de doo Have a very nice-looking... Uh, beastie stepper motor there that could be very interesting once more you've always you always get these photo sensors in these things and we've got ourselves a solenoid there solenoids are always useful you would have a uh, drawer in your uh, junk box just for solenoids very useful and of course we scored a high voltage uh, 200 volt DC uh, you know high current high power power supply so that in its own right very useful so definitely worth scoring an old laser printer like this and we scored a whole bunch of screws you can put those in your you know your miscellaneous uh screw box or something like that and we got a few springs out of these uh products i probably didn't salvage every last uh, one out of there but yeah definitely worth having a little spring drawer just in case now of course the first uh, port of call of this gear is to you know try and reuse them and you know fix them and reuse them of course and uh you know, give them you know either donate them to a worthwhile cause or something like that but uh if you can't then well you know definitely worth uh, saving them you know especially if they're uh, you know they're sort of not worth uh fixing or something like that and the good thing is uh, if you want to tear these things down i didn't really need anything serious i just needed a number two uh phillips screwdriver which basically did everything a uh, big flathead just for levering uh stuff pair of pliers usually comes in handy small um pair of needle nose for you know getting out uh, springs and stuff like that and one of them uh did actually need a uh, torx but yeah if you want to go and uh, rip these things apart um on site you know if you're hiding out in the dumpster and you don't want to take it out well you're you know disassembling one of these things in the dumpster and salvaging all the parts out of it then yeah you don't need to take along a big toolkit with you generally you know a couple of screwdrivers is uh, gonna let you uh salvage all the stuff you like and a pair of uh, side cutters as well just for you know uh, ripping through any uh cable harnesses that uh get in the way way for you know your uh, speedy exit from the dumpster so i hope you liked that video if you want to discuss it jump on over to the ev blog forum and if you like tear down tuesday as always thumbs up Catch you next time. I better go clean my hands. I have actually cleaned them a bit, but yeah, they're still a little bit dirty. See ya. And back down here in the garbage room, aka Aladdin's cave, we have another three of these multi-function things or uh, office things. It's a HP Office Jet L seventy-five eighty. Um, you know, presumably not working. They usually got you know some sort of little fault with them. Hey, we've got another monitor down there tiny little thing I don't know I've already got like 18 monitors we've got a uh, phaser 3100 MFP you may uh, remember I've mentioned that one before that's the one that was dumped on top of the uh, LCD monitor that time and we've got another HP laser jet uh, something or other and once again these are all you know the scanner uh, type and of course this has got a uh, sheet feeder on top it's probably another motor or two in there and uh, stuff like that this one's also a uh, sheet feeder so these things are a dime a dozen they really are it's crazy Ugh. and for those people who ask because I get a lot of people asking where is this garbage room and can I go there is it publicly accessible no it's not it's a private uh, garbage room and you do need a key to get in it's in a corporate uh, the EV blog at corporate towers here down in the uh, basement Sorry, eh, you've got to find your own. But uh, yeah, all of these uh, large industrial uh, parks and big uh, commercial buildings, they'll all have a garbage room like this. And well, this one just happens to have a high percentage of uh, these sorts of office products. Anyway, catch you next time.